and, and we plan, well, well, I'll come to it. And, and so today we're talking about preparing. I'll say more about that in a moment. Uh, because it's not, you know, sometimes you can make plans, you get really excited about thinking, oh, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. Well, hang on, that's the plan, but you've still got to prepare to how, how are you going to accomplish that. So preparing is really important. Praying, next week we're going to talk about praying. So it's how we, we include God in all that we do, in our plans. You know, we don't plan here and then go over here and pray as if they're two different things. Because all of life is lived out for God. So how praying comes into everything that we do and everything we plan about. And then finally, uh, priorities. Because there is so much to do that we have to know what's really important to do. And so we need to work out and discern what our priorities are. So um, now on to preparing for today. And um, firstly, the importance of preparing. You know, I the first thing I thought of when I was thinking of this topic a few weeks ago was when I first went to job interviews, uh, which so uh, I, I went from uni and I worked for, for four years in an accounting firm. Uh, before I went to Bible college and turned around and to do what I'm doing now. So that, that first job interview, I was totally unprepared. I thought I was prepared, but I was unprepared. I was, I was, I was actually quite naive about it. And I went to these jobs to work in these accounting firms and um, I don't know, they must have felt sorry for me because I got a job. <laughs> but I don't think I was well prepared. About 20 years later, when we came back from uh, West Africa and I was trying to get uh, work uh, for, for, that, for that year before I went back into church uh, work, I went to a lot of interviews then and I was a lot better prepared. You know, 20 years on, I was a lot, you know, I was ready. I was, I read up on things and I was ready to ask questions of the person interviewing me, but the first time, no way. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Uh, God was just very gracious. Um, but, you know, lots of us know about preparing for different things. I guess, John and Jenny, you have had a lot of preparation in the last few months, and it's probably not finished yet as you prepare to, to uh, buy a house over in the other side of town and leave your, your house here, leave back as much, so many things to do. Uh, so we don't, in some ways, we don't envy you <laughs> in that preparation, but we pray for you and we trust that things continue to work out in God's good time. The, uh, the passage that I want to focus on, or at least be a launching point for what I'm saying, because Really, uh, a number of things that I want to say are really quite practical things. But here's the launching point, and, and I go back to um, two, two weeks ago, I talked to you about a parable from Matthew 25. There's three important parables in Matthew 25. We're not going to read it, the whole parable today, because last week I talked about, uh, sorry, two weeks ago, I talked about the parable of the talents. Uh, Today, I'm, I'm referring to the parable of... Now, some of the Bibles, and this is the way I learned it in Sunday school, of the five um, foolish virgins and the five wise virgins. Um, but if you look at some of the Bible translations and they're right, you could translate that bridesmaids. And even if you translate it bridesmaids, it, it's not quite the same as what we think of bridesmaids today. So, so bear that in mind. But that was the story. That, that was the parable that Jesus told. If you want to read it, Matthew 25, verses 1 to 12. And I'm just going to quickly summarize what, what the, the main points of that is. So 
What's really important is the background to Jesus telling these parables and the way that they were used in, in the book of Matthew. Because remember, all the, all the Gospels, all the letters went to somebody. Somebody, a church, was reading these things that were sent to them in a letter or in, in the form of a Gospel. Uh, that some or there was an audience even back then and there were people so you, you get this idea even from Matthew chapter 24 um, there was this sense of Jesus is going to come back now we all believe that we know that and Jesus has not come back until now but we still expect his uh, what we call the second coming at the time there were people that were thinking that he might come back soon and they that you couldn't blame them for thinking that because the sense of when this might be that jesus would come back wasn't it wasn't clear right and then jerusalem was destroyed in AD 70 and there was this kind of expectation well jesus might also come back again and and so part of these parables address that fact that he's coming back but it's not it's unexpected his coming back would be unexpected and in that sense it's not predictable we know he's coming but it's unexpected so that's the background of all these parables in matthew chapter 25 and the story was basically now in a parable and we've said this before in a parable you have to be really careful there's story to make a point you have to be careful not to pull every little bit of the parable apart and try to make sense of it because that's not the way parables are meant to be understood it's just a it's a literary form that was common in that time and Jesus liked to use it as one of the ways he taught so the main point was here was this wedding a wedding was going to happen and and in that time as we know the engagement was really important that was it was almost like here's where the commitment has happened the engagement but when the wife joins her husband and goes to be with her husband was quite a time after the engagement often and you know they had to work out the sort of the all the, the the money kind of side of things and, and all that sort of thing. So there was quite a time. And the bridesmaids, and you could even read into this, the wedding guests, it could be the bridesmaids or the, you know, the maidens that help the bride, it could be the friends of the groom, it could be just the wedding guests, would form a bit of a procession as the, as the bridegroom takes his bride home with, home to his, Home. And part of that was over a, a great celebration, a feast, and, and all that sort of thing. And the point about this was were the guests going to be ready? Because in this procession, they would light these kind of torches, which it was, it was probably just a, a, a kind of a cloth soaked in oil, uh, which would be set on fire with torches, and they'd be part of this procession as the Bridegroom, as the bridegroom takes his bride home. So it was part all caught up in the wedding feast and, and the wedding celebration. And the point was that some of the, the guests didn't, um, hadn't prepared to have the oil that they needed to light the torches. Right? That was the point. They were not prepared when it counted. So, um, and so what happened was the celebration happened but some of those people were not ready they were not prepared because they didn't have oil for their lamps that was the point because you'll see verse 13 of Matthew chapter 25 gives the point and it's basically saying you don't know the hour so be prepared be ready that's the point of it verse 13 be ready so that is what Jesus was basically talking about in that parable 
So for us, yes, we need to be ready for the Lord's unexpected coming because we know that it, it can be at any time. But we also need to live our lives because we know His coming is unexpected. We need to be vigilant in everything we do in our lives. And so this year, what we do right now, what we do today and what we do in this year is also important. Uh, it's an important year for us to be prepared in. We need to be prepared. Now, there are lots of examples in the Bible about the importance of preparation. Well, one of those was uh, talked about the Passover feast that God was preparing his people before they went, came out of Egypt. Remember Joshua when Joshua and his army uh, had to conquer Jericho. He was this great fortress which at that point was one of the things that was an obstacle to them uh, um, conquering and, and having the promised land for themselves. This fortress of Jericho, this great city with these great walls and they prepared by listening, well firstly listening to God's instruction and for six days they walked once around the city and they, they, were, meant, they were quiet. So you know, there, there's a bit of war strategy going on, you know, because the military, the, the, the city, the people they were trying to fight against are thinking, what in the world are they doing? You know, but on the seventh day, they walked around the city seven times and then at Joshua's command, they blew these trumpets and they shouted and the city fell. There was a lot of preparation that had to happen before the city fell. David, David and Goliath. David went to the brook. So all that sort of stuff happened where, you know, the people gave him Saul's armor and it was too heavy and all that sort of thing. He's a shepherd boy. He has certain skills. Uh, and one of them was with a slingshot. He decided that the way he was going to prepare was he was going to go to the brook, pick out five stones, and one of those killed the giant. And maybe that is a, a bit of a kind of a, a symbolic way for us to remember that there are giants in our lives and preparing in the right way can help to kill those giants. So what do we need to prepare well? And here's a few things that I have just kind of listed. I, I know that there might be lots of other things, so I'm just going through this pretty quickly. Firstly, you have to know the importance of something. Uh, because if you don't think it's important, you're not going to prepare for it. Uh, it's a bit like those bridesmaids who wanted to be at the wedding feast. They had to prepare. Then there's motivation. Uh, you know, sometimes we have a, a kind of a negative motivation for doing something. And, and uh, I, th I think of something like, uh, if you're in a, say, in a rented house, uh, which, you know, say we were, we were at uh, before we bought here in Back of Smash, and lots of you have had the same situation happen. And then from time to time, the estate agent is going to come and do a house inspection. Now, if you don't keep a house uh, reasonably tidy, <laughs> You have this frantic kind of running around and putting things away and trying to, you know, put the obvious dirt off and all that sort of thing. So that's a negative motivation, but it's a motivation for preparing. Uh, but it might also, it, and, I, and I would hope to think that a lot of our preparation is also for the sense of the reward you get from preparing well and then achieving the thing that you were preparing for. Motivation is important. Then there's discipline, and, and there, is, there is discipline about it, isn't it? Like, it, it's kind of nice, you know, sometimes you get carried away and excited about your plans, but you've got to do the hard work of preparing and then carrying them out. You've got to do the actions. Uh, you've got to get started. Sometimes that's hard. Sometimes it is hard work. Uh, sometimes it's a bit challenging. Uh, and often, and we know that from life, that important things, are not always the easy things. Um, but God will give us the strength to do it. Now, 
I had an experience last year. Oh, sorry, yeah, during COVID, uh, we we have we have put a got a new deck put on in our house a few years ago, and I was a bit kind of a little bit discouraged to hear that if you don't keep staining your deck, that new deck doesn't kind of keep that new appearance very long. So I thought, oh no, you know, like we've got a new deck, but now we keep staining it and all that. So we have like outsourced that, we had it, had it done a couple of times by other people, and then I thought, oh, I don't want to go through this again. I thought maybe I should give it a go myself. And so I watched all these YouTube videos, and um, I did. I did. It was. I found some of them really helpful. Uh, I I got the materials together, uh, and I took a lot longer than a professional would do <laughs> to do it. But I did it, and when I finished it, I you know I felt a little bit like how God was in Genesis, and I thought, this isn't too bad. I'm quite happy with this. Uh, you know, I saw that it was good, and I was satisfied. So what seemed, what, what started off like, was more like a task that you had to do, ended as something that I was actually uh, fairly committed to, and I, I enjoyed that, in that whole process. There are other things uh, that we need to prepare well. Obviously, we need, we need resources and we need to know where to go to for those resources when we need them. Uh, sometimes, they, they, some of those resources might come from, with, from within and sometimes they are practical things we just need to go to or information or whatever. And then I think, I think something that's it's quite important, but maybe we underrate it, is just support and encouragement. You know, sometimes, um, just to know that someone else knows what you're doing or what you're trying to do is a good thing because they might be able to sort of encourage you in it. If you know, it's a bit of a project that takes a long time, they might be able to encourage you in it and um, that might help you. And sometimes you might have actual physical things that they might be able to help you with. I've got... Um, uh, there's, there's a few people in this church that uh, have helped me with, um, with, with things like things around the garden, like handyman sort of things, like Alan Barry is one of them. Uh, you know, might ask him, well, how, how do you think I should do this? Or, you know, uh, and there are people like that. And there are people in lots of areas of our lives that can support us. So those sort of things are really helpful to know to prepare well. So my next Point, and this is basically winding down to, to probably just the really practical things about preparation, is what sort of things in our lives might, might we need to prepare in? Um, and, and I go back again to what I was saying before, that what, what we're talking about here is we already decide what's important to do in our plans, but if we want to carry those plans out, we have to go further and prepare well. So, so that's what, and, and what I want to share with you now is just some of the things that people might feel are important in their planning and also then preparing to do these things. I'm not... Um, I've got a list here, by the way, of the things that I'm going to talk to you about now. You're welcome. I've only got some copies there, but if the copies run out, I'm more than happy to, to get more copies and get them to you uh, during the week. So what I'm talking about now is in a written list there. But this list, there's nothing kind of magical or important, and please don't go away thinking... Jeremy said that these are the really important things that you have to do and prepare for in, in the next. That's not what that's not what this is about. These are sort of things that perhaps other people think are important, and I think, as I, I think about some of these things, that we would think are important too. But um, don't think that oh, I have to get all these things done because then you you've misunderstood me. 
These are just things that might even jog our memories about, oh yeah, I better, I better get hold of that. That's something I wanted to do. So here we go. Um, and I'm putting them in, uh, in a kind of an order of about five main headings. So the first one I call spiritual, and it's in the next slide. So here we go. Now, you're going to look at that and you, you're going to think, well, yeah, that's pretty obvious. You know, like we're people of faith and, and you know, <laughs> those are the things that we have to do. But I want to just quickly comment on some of these. Prayer, meditation and Bible. Now, we, we all know that in some way, in, in maintaining our relationship with God, these things are important. But there's not only one thing to do. In fact, nowadays, there are so many ways that we can be creative and there's so many ideas that other people give us out on the internet and so on. The U version Bible, it's got lots of great things, devotions, all that sort of thing. But there's, there's all sorts of things. In, in fact, even if we ask each other, what do you do? Uh, we might be able to learn from that and get an idea that we haven't done before. But some of the, some of the things, you know, last week Scott asked the, um, this number of questions. So when we think of prayer, meditation and, and Bible, uh, reading the Bible and studying it, uh, there's the why. Why would you do that? Why do you think this is important? There's the what. What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? And where are you going to do it? Is where important when we're talking about meditation and, and <coughs> prayer and Bible study? I think it is really important because there are some, sometimes, uh, some places that you, you just would get too distracted. So, you know, Jesus got up early in the morning and went probably to the hills if they were there or some, to a quiet place. To, to spend time with God. So the where is important, but that quiet place can be in most unexpected places. You know, you can be walking in the middle of Melbourne uh, with all these people and you could be, that could be a quiet place for you because you don't know anyone, they don't know you and you could be just doing that with God. So you, you don't want to presume on what a quiet place is for you, but that's important. Journaling is also important. I was just catching up with uh, someone a couple of weeks ago, and this is a person who's involved in Christian ministry. And they said to me, and this wouldn't surprise anybody, but they said to me, I don't have, you know, I've been struggling because I don't feel that, that vibrancy with God that I would like to feel. You know, here I am involved in Christian ministry, but I don't feel that vibrancy with God that, that I would like to, to know. And as we talked about it, uh, he acknowledged that one of the things that might help uh, to, for him was to do some journaling. That, you know, basically it's where you, 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 you get a book. Or some people, now I, I could do something like that on my phone because your phone's got a part where you can make notes. And you've often got your phone with you, so I like to do that, but I don't journal at the moment, not every day or anything. But journaling is something that a lot of people have, helped, have found very helpful yeah. to do as a way of knowing what their thoughts are and expressing their thoughts even, even to God and keeping a, a, an account of things that they do that are significant in the way that God might be speaking to them, you know, through the Bible, through other people through things they're hearing. And I've also mentioned here the Sabbath because uh, now I wrote, uh, those of you who are on email, I wrote an email early last week and um, I mentioned this to you that if anyone wanted to, to uh, know more about what Sabbath about, it was mentioned way back, back in Genesis chapter 1, What's it about? And um, how does it relate to us now? And I, I preached a sermon in September 2019 and I revised it and I'm happy to share those <coughs> notes with you. It's a, bit, it's a bit like a kind of a Bible study. And in the whole idea of Sabbath, and this is why I raise it in this, in this context of spiritual, God created the whole world 
Then he rested on the seventh day, and God established a kind of a rhythm for our lives, for his creation, and said that that was a good, that was a good thing. This, this was the way God created. He rested. We need rest. Rest is not just a simple thing. That's why I just mentioned things like, I think that in Sabbath, in the way that God talked about it, all these things come into it. Uh, our hobbies, our playing is part of what, you know, you know, in, in God's creation, it was not all kind of, it, it, it was profound, but, you know, you look at some of the animals around, do you think God didn't have a bit of a laugh? Did, did, did he kind of not enjoy uh, seeing, you know, um, you know, like, I don't know, otters or meerkats or monkeys and, and those kind of things that give us a laugh too. And playing is important for our own lives. Like even, even little children, playing is important for them to develop and grow. And uh, playing is really good for human beings too. Uh, sorry, for adults, for adult human beings. Hobbies are, are important too. I, I've been kind of, maybe kind of rediscovering some things that I quite enjoy doing in the last 10 years that I hadn't done much of earlier in my, in my life. And dreams are not out of question. I, I don't mean the things that we dream at night and sometimes you think, why did I dream that? I mean those dreams like, you know, Psalm 37 4 is a beautiful verse. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, that's not a kind of a, you take delight in the Lord today and tomorrow, you know, something's going to turn up and it's going to be one of your heart's desires. But it's a kind of a promise that could be for lots of things. What are the things that I really desire? It could be part of what I dream about. And some of those things, uh, as we continue to walk with God and take the light in Him, some of those things might become a reality for us. So all those things are caught up in preparing spiritually. If they're important, then we need to not only plan for them, but we need to prepare for them. Uh, the next ones I'm just going to go through very quickly. Um, next slide, please. Uh, involvement and attitude. So some of this is very kind of personal, and not everybody would think about some of these things as being important, but we know the importance of volunteering. Like everybody feels like to contribute in some way, uh, whether it's through the, the life of the church or the op shop or the community garden or some some other way in, in the community is a really strengthening and growing thing for us. Strengthening our personal relationships is always a, a, you know, a significant thing for, for most of us to do. Uh, there are just things that are very personal. You know, uh, I want to try and be more great, grateful in my life. I want to be more positive in my attitude. I want to be able to enjoy the little things and not just pass by and take those things for granted. Uh, I want contentment, but not, it's not, contentment is not just about doing a lot or having a lot of things. It's about finding the things that really are the quality things and that give me contentment. Uh, I might want to say, I really should stop procrastinating and plan to, to do that. And I know we all, we all struggle with that because there's not everything that are in our plans that we jump to, is there? There's some things that just have to happen and they're not so easy. Um, so that brings me to the next one. And this might be some of the things that are not so easy. The kind of the must-do things, uh, you know, the house jobs, the, the sorting and filing, you know, like where's that document? Where is that birth certificate of mine? Or where is that bank statement that I need tomorrow because of something? Or, you know, it's all that so you sorting you know, and putting up kind of doc important documents in order and all that sort of thing. Uh, tackling repairs that, you know, maybe your house is not falling down, but something keeps waiting for it to be done. How, how are you going to prepare to, to do that? Finances, that's a, that's a really big one. Uh, do I need to budget this year? Do I need to get someone to help me with that? Uh, are there areas, particularly, you know, I'm okay with my finances in most ways, but in certain areas, I really need to, to do some budgeting. It might be things like that, and it might be a lot more things for you 
um, that are the must-do things. Uh, then quickly, the next one, David. Uh, health. So I don't, I don't mean that we have to keep eating and drinking because we already know that. But what are we eating and what are we drinking and how do we, how do we approach those sort of things and, and how are they good for our health or not good for our health? Uh, moving, people say, well, we all know that, but it's just important to keep moving. Like, the, the, I know that the older we get, the more, you know, we are reminded that when we move, it's not so easy. But we are constantly being told it's, it's, it's important to move if you can and move in whatever way you can. And then, of course, that's related to the next one. Exercise is also good. We, we keep hearing, I'm not a doctor, uh, but, but I know enough about that that it, that it helps me and I know that if I don't do it, um, it, it will only hinder the other things that I feel are important to do. So I have to keep doing those things. And then the last one is to stretch yourself. And I don't mean physically, so don't panic. <laughs> I'm not talking about physical stretching. I'm talking about stretching in, in, in the way we are as people. And here was a quote that I found. The human mind, once stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimension. So when we stretch ourselves, um, it's a good thing. It's as, particularly as, as we grow older, it's a good thing to find things to stretch ourselves. So here was a new, uh, just a list that I saw, and I thought, oh, some of these, some of these are appropriate for me. Learn a new skill, um, be more conscientious about the things that you, you do already do. Uh, you know, don't, don't laugh, increase your IQ, that's not a bad thing. In, in, increase your EQ. There's lots of little tests. It's quite fascinating if, you, if you've got the ability to go on the internet. There's lots of little tests all over the place where you can do this thing. So emotional intelligence, you might be interested to know that in the training to be a minister, and in the ordination training for Baptist Union, I'm sure the other denominations are pretty much the same. Emotional intelligence is really important. It's stress. So it's, it's the way you kind of, how you handle your emotions over a whole lot of things. You know, when you have a conflict, uh, how you get on with certain people. If you're a male, how you relate to females. If you're female, how you relate to males. Uh, how you react when things are difficult and you're tempted to be angry or frustrated with people. That's all emotional intelligence. And you might pass, you know, all your great theology and do all the right things and preach a good sermon and all that sort of stuff. But if you haven't got good emotional intelligence, uh, they would wonder about whether you should go forward uh, to be a minister. So it's, it's really important. And it's not just important in, uh, in, in that field, it's important in so many fields. A lot of people, businesses, everything would acknowledge that nowadays. Um, and the last thing was uh, learn something new each day or each week as, as a kind of a goal. Uh, now, one of the things, and I saw this list when I was looking at other lists uh, about watching a TED talk. So the TED talks are often, like, I think there's plenty of short ones. I think there are, lo there are longer ones, but there are plenty of short ones that you can see. And I actually started watching one, which I didn't finish it because I was preparing the sermon and I got back to the sermon, which was important because I had to preach this today, preparing. And, but this TED talk was something about why we do the things that we do. You know, how come we do some things and we don't do other things? And I found it quite interesting and I saved it and I'm going to go back and listen to it completely. Uh, so there's lots of things like that. There's, so I've just, I've just shared this with you, just maybe even to jog your own memory about, oh, yeah, this, this might be important to me, but there are a lot of other things that I haven't mentioned and I realise that. But the main point is uh, that we prepare. When we decide that planning is important, then preparation becomes obvious. It's what we need 
to give our plans the best chance of succeeding. So I, don't, I didn't share this with you today so that you would be overwhelmed, um, but if you are, um, if you are a little bit over overwhelmed, and that's kind of made you think, oh, you know, I've got to get up kind of that. It's better to feel like that now than to get to the end of the year and think, oh, if only I had done some better planning and preparation back in January. It's only just the middle of January now, and you might think, oh, a lot better if I had a plan then, back in January now, rather than in November, when you suddenly panic because there's all these things I've done. So coming back to Proverbs, oh, no, I'm not going to share this. I think we're kind of coming to the end of it. Um, I just wanted to just share a little story uh, for me, but it, I think it'll take a bit too long to share. But it basically comes back to how you do all your plans in life, but as you look at how it's come out at the end, you realise that God's hand has been there, helping you, cooperating with you and you with, with him. And um, there are a few things like that that I could go back to and say, yep, yeah, that was true. And I'm sure that for each one of you, that's probably true too. And next week, we will be talking about how to involve God in all of our plans. So it's not just it's not just about how do you pray, but it is about praying and speaking to God and conversing with God in all the plans that we take into this year. We don't know when things will happen, so it's better to be prepared than not.